This puppet show it stays on because of you fools. We've been dancing with the devil way too long. I know it's gone, but get ready to pay your dues. Oh God, come back home. This crazy world is filled with lies and abusers. We need you now before we're too far gone. I hope one day they finally see the truth. God, we need you now. You know the truth is hard to swallow, just digest it. Suspected something's going on. Chosen, are just neglected. Deflected by some breaking news. How we just accept it. Expected just to fall in line and follow their perspective. Don't question their objectives. But I got a lot of questions. How these kids molested, but nobody's been arrested. I read it in the testament. These children are protected. So I'm fighting all these terrorists, both foreign and domestic. Hey folks, welcome to Truth Talk with Steve. Today I'm so excited to talk to this beautiful lady who I just am getting acquainted with myself, uh, June Edward, and I'm so grateful you've taken the time to be here today. So thanks for being here and uh, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, as as uh, I was reading last night a little bit about you on your website and all the books you've written, and you know, you or basically an expert at relationships, and you're also a psychic medium. And that's really the stuff that I'm very interested in and really been, you know, I've been listening to a lot of different people over the last year plus as I've tried to, you know, focus on my spirituality and my connection to my creator um, after growing up in a religion for 45 years and then kind of finally seeing that for what it is um, and breaking free from that. and you know, the freedom, and I can't even explain the difference in my spiritual journey, my spirituality as a whole, but also my connection with my creator. And that's something that, you know, we live in a world that is so crazy right now. Um, Well, we're in the process of a a huge awakening, which, you know, be grateful that you chose to be here at this time. How exciting it is. I am very grateful, but yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it seems like we're fighting outside forces <laughs> so yes we'll oh yes fighting. i told you mercury retrograde yeah so we'll just keep <laughs> Mer- fighting. mercury retrograde is a doozy right now <laughs> <laughs> well talk a little bit about that for those that are listening and, and let's talk let's start there and talk a little bit about that and some of the things that you know that you're aware of that are taking place so there's always planets going retrograde the things are always moving the reality of it is everything is energy Everything Mm -hmm. in the universe is energy. Our souls are pure energy. And so we are affected by energy, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you like it or not, we are. When you walk into a wedding or birthday party, you can pick up on that energy, right? That elevated energy that's in the room, that excitement. And same as when you walk into a funeral, you're picking up on that lower vibration, that lower energy. So everything is energy. And when the planets are pulling and pushing against themselves, you know, it affects us as well. Same thing with, you know, the rising tides and water and the moon and the pull, the gravitational pull, because it's all energy and our bodies are 90, like 90% water. Yeah. So we feel all that, you know, we feel all that and you have to navigate that. And what I do is I teach people how to balance their energy. You know, if you're not balanced, if you've got a full moon and you're going crazy, you're not yeah. balanced. <laughs> you know, if you're not balanced, if you're letting everything that's happening in the world affect you right now, because there's a big energetic shift happening. And obviously, we're in the middle of a war against, you know, evil and good right now. Yeah. Everything in the universe has to stay in balance. This is why you have the day and the night you have um, left and right for everything. Everything has to be in balance. And when it's out of balance, there has to be a shift. And it's been out of balance for a very long time. And this is why you're seeing the big shift. And it plays out politically because we're in a 3D world and politics is what rules power in this world. That's the only reason it's you're seeing it play out in a political arena. Okay. But it is literally evil versus good that's happening in the world right now. It's not contained in any one continent or in any one country. This is a worldwide event that's happening and it's huge. And, you know, we all planned our lives before we came here. So we, everyone that's here right now, you chose to be here during this event for some reason. 
whether it was to make a larger impact on the people that are here. And as much as you think that you're not making an impact, every one of us is like a pebble thrown in a pond. That's and so that cool. ripple effect that keeps on going out and going out, everyone affects more people than they could ever realize, even on a daily basis. You go into a grocery store and the girl's ringing up your groceries, you could be the person that makes the difference as to whether or not she goes and jumps off a bridge on her way home or decides she's going to stay and give her marriage another chance. You don't know. Yeah. You really don't know. So it doesn't cost anything to be kind. Be kind. Oh, yeah, that's so true. And that's, I mean, that's, that's really what yeah. we've lacked and what we need. Is, well, you know, and it's the holiday well. season on top of it. It's a very difficult, yeah, stressful cool. time for a lot of people. I'll you say. don't know what individuals are going through. Just be kind. What, you know, what's what's crazy is that, you know, I love the movie Avatar when it came out because that's what we really are. We are not the suit that's <laughs> sitting in front of you. We are the soul, the energetic soul that's inside. Yeah. And we're here. It's like playing a part in a movie. That's all we're doing. We're here playing a role and you're here to have a 3D experience. And that's what you're having. So you really need to take things a little bit lighter, a little bit less stressful. And what I do is I teach not only how energy works and how the universe works, but how to get in touch with your soul. Because that's who you really that's are. Bingo. Yeah. So, you know, we all have this body. This is what we're dealing with here so that we can enjoy this environment and this lifetime and this, this role that we're playing here. <clears throat> and, you know, we have a brain in our head, most of us, right? <laughs> our, <laughs> our <of> brain, <laughs> yeah, our brain is nothing more than a giant computer. That's all it is. And so it helps true. you process the information that you get. Yeah. But your brain has a primary, primary um, thing that it's supposed to be doing. And your brain's job is to protect you. How does it do that? It does it by creating fear. So most people are making their decisions based on fear. And yeah. when you do that, it's literally a crapshoot. You it's a 50-50 shot if it's going to work out and you're always going to question your decision. So when you learn how to get in touch with your soul, that's that knowing. That's that everybody has had something in their life that they have just done because they knew it was the right thing to do. They didn't question it and it worked out fine. That's your soul. When you make decisions from your soul, it is the right decision 100% of the time and it will work out fine always. Now that's that's interesting. And that's, that's part of why, you know, I've really been on this journey myself is because that's what I, you know, because of how complex and the fog of war can be so crazy and hard to really decipher who's who maybe, or the things that, or maybe the beliefs that you're starting to have based on information you've researched and received. But because I don't, I think it's not that I don't, I'm not willing to truly trust anybody, not anybody, but out trust there I'm listening to. Trust I want to, yes. Soul. And so trust that's why hundred percent. So, you know, as you were mentioning that, I was thinking, okay, there are certain things I've, Still, I have a knowing, but yet mm -hmm. I still, I don't, maybe you want, you, that fear, but I'm not, a, I'm not a hundred percent confident in, in. So you want, in, it's nice to have justification. It's nice to have not justification, in, but um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, confirmation. It's nice to have confirmation. Yes. So it's like when I work on a missing person case or something and uh, I'm giving them all the information. And I don't hear from them for months or months or whatever. And all of a sudden I get something saying, oh, my God, I forgot to tell you, we found them exactly where you say. It's nice to get that confirmation. Sometimes I get it. Sometimes I don't get it. Uh -huh. But I, I have to know that what I'm giving is 100 percent of what I'm getting. And gotcha. that's a that's a mistake that a lot of mediums don't make. Even psychics don't make because, you know, we have an ego in this body. And <laughs> yes, I yeah, find it every day. Exactly. And when you're doing things to fulfill that ego, it's the wrong reason. Bottom line. So true. And many, many people are doing everything to fulfill that ego. And you know what? What other people think of me, that's their issue. I don't care. Yeah. If you know, you I've been called everything under the sun, crazy, a charlatan yeah. of this, or that. Guess what? You don't need my help at this point. Then when you need it, you'll 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 come back. 
Yeah. But, you know, I don't hold back information because I'm afraid I might be wrong or I'm afraid that somebody's going to think I'm stupid. I yeah. have to give what I get. You know, crazy, crazy one. I was at a, I had a, um, a very large event. I used to be a platform medium where I would get in front of two, three, four hundred people with an audience. And, you know, I would call on people in the audience and give them messages. And I called on a guy in the front row and I said, you know, I always ask who they want to talk to. I don't bring through people randomly because I could yeah. be there all day long trying to guess who it's for. <laughs> so I asked him who he wanted to talk to. He said he was a widow. He wanted to talk to his wife that passed. I'm like, okay. So I had them, I had them call him in their head. And, you know, I described the person that showed up. I'm like, all I'm getting is someone holding up what looks to me like a prom dress. And I'm hearing prom dress. This is all I'm getting. The guy starts bawling his eyes out. He's wow. like, oh my, I'm like, I'm like, it makes no sense to me, right? Yeah. He's like, oh my God, that's my wife. He goes, that was her yeah. saying every time she left the house, I'm off like a prom dress. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I, that's the thing. I've seen yeah. so much of those types of things that I mean, I do I comprehend or understand how you have that ability? No, it's energy. Really so you it. have to, it, oh, it's yes. easy. so, I, I, so, you know, it's like I died when I was 27. Okay. Uh -huh. I went to heaven and I came back here by choice. I had never even heard the term near NDE, death experience, yeah. NDE. I didn't even know what that was until actually only like a couple of years ago. Never, never heard of it. Wow. Right. I always said I died because I know I died. Yeah. Scientists call it an NDE because they can't quantify it yet. They cannot exactly. repeat it themselves at this point, although they've tried. And this is yeah. the reason they call it an NDE. Okay. But eventually they'll figure it out because our energy, our soul, which is pure energy, when it goes into the light, this is where quantum physics comes in. Yep. Speed of light is over 300 million miles a second. And this is how fast our soul can travel when it's not in our body because it's just pure energy. And when my soul came back into my body, it's not traveling that fast any longer, but it is still at a much higher vibration than most people's. Yeah. So that's what I attribute my ease and ability to be able to connect instantly to the other side. And I can go back and forth to the fifth dimension because that's where most of our soul is located anyways. Our yeah. soul is way too big for the body that it's in. Okay. So, tell so we, we stuff some of our soul in our body and uh -huh. then people talk about the aura that's over your body. Some yep. people can see that see that's, yep. that's part of your soul. That's right outside your body. And then the rest of your soul, which is quite a bit of it is in the lowest level of heaven, which is the fifth dimension. And that orchestrates right. the timing of all the events that happen in your life. And when you learn how to connect with your soul, you're connecting with that part that's still in the fifth dimension, and you can start accessing all the all the knowledge that you've had in all of your lifetimes. Yep, it's absolutely incredible. Help me clarify this, maybe because I'm I'm wondering if I'm misunderstanding, because I've heard, in fact, it was just recently I heard someone talking about you know the soul is the soul separate from consciousness. Because they I, are one and the they, same. That's they what are one I thought. The same. Your soul is your consciousness. Sure. That's what I yeah. So, but that. It's, yeah, and, and it, someone and was. I just heard recently that like seventy percent of it, which sounds like what you're talking about, isn't you know with us in this avatar. Right. It's okay. Right. It's in it's in the fifth dimension. Yeah, that's and, fascinating. And you know, and what's interesting is when you go to sleep at night, if you're not connecting yeah. with your soul during the day through meditation, uh -huh. when you go to sleep at night, your vibration actually rises. Yeah. And more of your soul leaves your body. And Doesn't travels. it go to the astral a lot of time? The astral it plane? It can go where it wants to go. And, wow. and it can go see other people. Okay. So you can, even if you haven't passed to the other side, the part of your soul that's in your body now can still go visit other people as well. Have conversations with them, all kinds of things. And you know it's a visit, not a dream, because it feels real and you wake up immediately and you remember it. <laughs> you remember it, so you know it's a visit it is not a dream same thing from the other side if they're trying to get a message through to you and you're not paying any attention to them then they will come through into your dream because they lower their vibration your vibration is rising you meet in that 4d dream state in the middle and that's wow. where most that's where most mediums connect is in that space but because my vibration's already higher 
um, I can go, they come, it's crazy. We, I just, I see them here and can converse Really? with them here. Yeah. I, I see them like, a, sometimes I don't know if they're real or they're just, or if they're a soul, if they've got that much power that they can completely transform. It's interesting. Wow. Yeah. How is there any worry or difficulty as far as, you know, I've, I've heard other people talk about mediums or maybe that's not the right word. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's the same. You can let me know. Or people that channel. Is that different? Same thing. So Same thing. people have different techniques. Um, so when you are, so for instance, a lot of times I'll bring through someone from the other side. Okay. They have so much energy. They talk so damn fast. I can't even repeat it. So they're not, I'm not really channeling them. I'm just letting them come through. So I am channeling them through me and I'm just talking. I'm just letting them talk through me. It's just a lot faster than me trying to repeat what they're saying because some of them have so much energy and they talk so damn fast. Wow. And other ones don't. Other ones, it's like playing a game of charades. They have taught me a very extensive list of things that have certain meanings for me Okay. to be able to get a message, but some things I don't know. So for instance, if I see a, you know, a plastic pocket protector on somebody, I know they either thought they were a geek in this lifetime or Yeah. they literally were an engineer or they could have been a geek one of the three so i would have to ask the person because they know them i don't was he a geek was he an engineer and then you know they might show me something that really has no meaning to me like a white cadillac i need to know from the person did they drive one were they hit by one do they sell them did, did you have one what's the connection with a white cadillac Yeah. I don't know. And in, for me to get the rest of the message out of them, I kind of need to know where they're going with it. I see. Other than, other than that, I don't want to know anything about it because I don't want people trying to give me information or lead me. I get my information Right. from the other side, not from the person in front of me. Is there any ever issues with, you know, any negative energy and negative, you know, beings, demonic type of issues or? So as a rule, I don't work with them. And I keep myself protected so they're not coming through when I open up. In fact, I teach meditation. And that's one piece that most people are missing. They're not protecting themselves before they're opening themselves up to the universe. You have to do that before meditation so that you're only letting in from the light. And you're not letting any dark entities in. However, you know, they've given me quite the education from the other side. And I've had to be exposed to evil. Um, I did do a house clearing in Connecticut years ago from a woman who had moved like 12 times and had a demon that was attached to her family. And I did call a paranormal group to go in with me to record it and film it. And, you know, as she's showing us her child's back, bite marks are appearing at the same Oh, time. crap. And I could see this demonic entity Really? and I chased it around the house and it was swearing at me and growling at me. And I'm looking at these guys. I'm like, you guys can't hear that. And they're like, no. So I'm like, stop, turn Wow. on the recorder, see if it's on there. Sure enough, the recorder picked it up, Isn't that swearing fascinating? at me and growling Wow. at me. Yeah, I could hear That's it. And, unreal. and it was afraid of me because it knows I've been to heaven. I've been in the light and I make You've it got very that, clear yeah. that that's who I'm coming with. I come with the angels. I bring God with me and that's it. Yep. So they run. Yeah. And anytime they, they don't want to put up that fight. They want your body if they can get it. Um, the demonic, you know, demonic entities do. They'll attach to you if you're out like at a bar or something like that. That's why alcohol used to be called spirits because it lowers your vibration Oh, wow. and it allows them to get into your body. So That they totally start makes as an sense. attachment and I see them. It looks like they're piggyback riding a dark shadow on your back. And then they whisper in your ear and they make friends with you until you let them in, basically. And that's where you have a full demonic possession. And I have actually had two students that have ended up in full demonic possessions because they did not follow my program. They did not protect themselves and they allowed it. And one of them was sitting there drinking with his wife instead of, you know, following the program. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. So that leads me to a question because what are some of the things that would allow maybe demonic energy to be attached to you? The reason I asked this specific is I have, a, I've got four boys. My youngest had been sick for quite a while. Wasn't sure what was going on. And I've got a friend who, you know, he was a doctor in, in Mexico. He's moved to the States and he does alternative stuff and the energy work. 
And, you know, he, he reads the eye and tell, I mean, it's fascinating. He, he's done it to me months, months back, but I didn't tell him anything my son was experiencing. And, you know, whatever it is he uses to read the eye, he literally nailed everything symptom wise that he was struggling with. But he also let him know that, you know, there was some demonic energy. Right. So when of, you, when you learn how energy works, you uh -huh. can pick up on it very quickly. Just like I said, what the difference between walking in a funeral and walking into a party, you notice the difference in the energy. So when you're very sensitive to energy, like I am, I can pick up on things immediately. Um, and I can do the same thing. I can scan someone's body, even at a distance and kind yeah. of tell where they have issues or problems in their body. Um, it, it's really crazy. I know. But um, awesome. yeah, I mean, so there were, I mean, if, that, if you could see a, one of those movies, The Night of the Living Dead, that's what it's like. They're all walking around all over the place. But, and you have lower vibrational, I call them low vibrational. They're just ghosts. Okay. Uh, right. But where ghosts, where one ghost is, more will gather. Right. Okay. So you can't keep them around. You don't want them around. And once you've got more ghosts there, then you bring in demonic activity because they feed off the energy of the ghost. Okay. And then they start getting you afraid and they feed off the energy of your fear. Interesting. So it becomes a collective. So is there things, and this isn't to, you know, I'm just transparent. I, I would ask my son if he was sitting right here. Um, I believe I, know I the type of kitty is, and I have my beliefs on what might allow that to have happened. So keep in mind that if you have a good heart, and Which if you does. have, and you have maybe a higher purpose in this world, you're a target. You've been attacked more, yeah. You are a target. I've been attacked. I've been I, as much as I protect myself. Uh -huh. I also have worked on, um, I worked on a lot of different things for paranormal authors and for paranormal groups. So I've, I, they'll send me pictures and photography and I interpret what I see in there. Uh -huh. And, you know, I was sent a picture of a scribing bowl once and they did not tell me that the building that they were doing the investigation on had been owned by, by a sorcerer in the 1600s. Oh, wow. And as I'm explaining to them what I'm seeing, I did not protect myself with like a salt circle or anything like that because I had no idea. And I was being attacked by this sorcerer who's been dead for 400 years, right? They have more wow. energy on the other side than they do here. Right. And I immediately, within 10 minutes, I had a full-blown sty on my eye that was closed up that took over a month to go away. It was wow. that fast, that fast. That's yeah. all right. So tell me if I'm off track here. And it doesn't matter other than I love my kid and I want, you know, if there's any insights I could give him that would help him, great. Okay. And he's fine and they've got some things to figure out. But my knowing him the way I do, but I'm not naive either, that there's things I probably don't know, um, of course. But I'm thinking because I know what he does spend too much time doing. <laughs> and, you know, it's basically playing these damn video games that right. many people are addicted to, you know, is that. So a lot of that, it's not good stuff because right. it lowers your vibration, bottom line. Anything yeah. that's lowering your vibration is not good. Drugs, alcohol, mundane stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, if he's doing something for a limited amount of time, that's good hand-eye coordination. That's different. Right. But when you're just zoning out yeah, for that's hours, that's not good. Okay. Right. But I also recommend that everyone wear some type of religious symbol, okay? Whether it's, I have a kundalini because it's the medical insignia. Yeah. Um, or you can wear, it's under here, or you can wear, um, you know, it's the kundalini with the, the medical insignia with the snake and everything on it. Because I, I, I'm a medical alert. I'm allergic to what killed me when I died when I was 27. <laughs> so yeah. I can wear that. But you can get a cross, you can get, you know, an Archangel Michael medal, anything like That's that. Cool, have yeah. it blessed. Have it blessed by a Catholic church and wear it. So what happens is when they're hunting around because they're, you know, they're looking for someone because they really want a body, they don't have a body, um, they're going to see that and they're going to say, ah, eh, let's go to the next one. Because if you can, if you're showing that you have some power there, some religious, yeah. you know, some, some faith, right. Yep. Then they don't want, they don't want that fight. They'll go to the next person and they'll prey on them. That and it's the sense. same thing in your home because they're walking around the streets. 
you know, souls can't, the souls that are stuck here can't move any faster than you or I because they haven't gone into the light. So they'll literally get in your car in a red light and go to the next one. Um, they'll climb on the bus like everybody else, but they'll walk right in your house. And if it looks comfortable, they'll make themselves at home. So I tell everybody the same thing. Every room That's of your house, house should have something, a cross, a statue, an angel, something. And that will make them uncomfortable enough that they'll leave. Well, that's yeah, that's good advice for sure. Yeah. Well, let's. So you were twenty seven when you had your near death experience. I was, yeah. You mind yeah. telling us a little bit about that? What happened? Yeah. So, um, so I was born. First of all, I was born with a lot of ability. Okay, I was yeah. very psychic as a kid. I was a medium. Didn't know it because I was a kid. Um, I would wake up in the morning and I would hear voices and think it was my parents and go in and they're fast asleep. I'd come back in my room and then I'd start seeing faces in my room and I'd try to hide under the covers and then I'd see, you know, the sun coming up and the shadow of a face over my, it was very scary as a child. I'll bet. And then when I was 10 years old, my parents split. My dad actually kidnapped the last five of us. Um, I didn't know my mom was a medium at the time. He just told us she was crazy. Oh, wow. And yeah, and I would do the dishes after dinner every night. And there was a woman, probably about the age of 45 or 50, who would stand there and keep me company and chat with me every night. I just assumed everybody oh, saw her. That I normal, yeah. Exactly. So I asked my brother one day who she was, my older brother, and he starts laughing his head off. I'm like, what's so funny? He goes, that's the dead woman that used to live here. Her husband killed her. He threw her down the basement stairs. And it scared me so much. She must have felt it because she never came back again. Wow. And then, you know, I used to tell the kids in school what was going to happen, what was coming up. And you get labeled a freak really quick. Oh, so I stopped. Sure. You know, I, I, was a, I was a wreck as a kid. I would bite my nails and I had facial tics and, um, you know, all kinds. I'd stutter. It was bad. I was I was a wreck. And um, I blocked it the most the best that I could for most of my life. However, if someone died and they were even an acquaintance of someone in the family, they would come to me immediately. And I'd tell them the next morning, I'm like, hey, uh, John Smith died last night. No, he didn't. I just saw him yesterday. I'm like, I'm telling you, he died. And sure enough, they would find out that he had died. Wow. So then as I got older, I was really intrigued with it. Um, I would read all the mystery books, you know, Anne Rule, you know, I loved her stuff. And um I hurt my back when I was 20, I got married at 21, I hurt my back at 22, uh -huh. and found out I was pregnant right after, so they couldn't do x-rays, they couldn't do much of anything, and it was bad, I spent the last three months of two pregnancies in bed, and then they told me if I wanted to have any more children, I had to have my back operated on, because my disc was going to blow up, and they'd pick out pieces, and I just knew if I had the surgery, I was going to die, I'd known that, and... Wow. I put it off for five years and still before I went in, I told everybody, I said, listen, I, I really think I'm going to die. And they're like, Oh no, you're just afraid. You'll be fine. Blah, blah, blah. So the night before the surgery, I went in for an MRI with a dye test. And I told them, I said, listen, I think I'm allergic to this dye. I had it once before I had a really bad reaction. And they're like, Oh no, no, it's the, that's what happens to everybody. Don't worry about it. What no, am I that's a I'm tricky doctor, one that happens. Right? I've had that happen. It tripped no. you out. I'm not the doctor. Yeah. So as soon as they injected me, I coded. That was it. I was gone. Jeez. <laughs> and I immediately, you know, I didn't see a tunnel of light or anything else. I immediately, I was gone. I, I was in heaven immediately. Wow. And I could see everything that was happening in the entire hospital. I saw the nurses talking about it at the station. Uh -huh. um, you know, the, at the nurse's station, I saw the crash cart come in. Um, I saw the doctor over there, you know, they tried injecting the line, nothing. They tried using the paddles, nothing. I saw him tip the table up and start slapping my face. I didn't hear anything, but he's wow. like, we can't lose you. We can't lose you. And in the meantime, I'm having a full life review. You know, yeah, I'm, so watching, yeah. I'm watching, I'm watching. That's big, pretty that's pretty well, normal. It, it's actually heard. not. Um, when really? I found when I found out, so I started researching quantum physics and NDEs uh -huh. because I'm planning a TED talk, and less than ten percent of the people that die get to the level that I got to. Oh wow! And have a full life review, and you know I don't know if they were showing me that for me to make the decision because as I'm having the review, I'm hearing that it's not my time. I can stay if I want to, or I could go back. It's my choice. 
And my life review was literally everyone that I'd loved, everyone that had touched me or anything that brought me joy. It was just, it was incredible. It's like watching this big, big IMAX movie in front of you. Yeah. And it took me a little bit. I really had to think about it because I didn't want to come back. Yeah. It's just, it's just so amazing on the other side. Um, and the feeling over there is just, it's pure love. The only two things you take with you is love and knowledge and all of the, you access all the knowledge of all your lifetimes when you're there. That's why when you connect with your soul, you can connect, you can access more of that. And the only reason that I came back was for my children, because I knew that they were the biggest part of my plan for being here and that I was supposed to be here for them. And I actually hadn't had my third child yet. So you know, when I came back, I ended up having my third child within wow. the next couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've listened to a lot of, you know, I've read a lot of books on Indies, but I also, I don't know if you're familiar with it, probably maybe even been on the podcast, The Next Level Soul. Have you heard of Alex uh, Ferrari? I don't know if that's how you say his last name, but. No, but I'll look for him. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. It's basically yeah. tons of just NDEs and they're very. Oh, know, wait a minute. I think I did just book with him. I actually did yeah. just book with him. Yeah. yeah. He hasn't been doing, I've been a couple of years and his podcast just blown up. Yeah. So a lot of people mm. that come back commit suicide because really? you come back into this, you come back into this lower so, vibe. Well, yeah. you come back into this low vibration. After and experiencing that. That back. And you, so anybody that's listening to this that has had an NDE and is feeling like they cannot get that back, you can learn how to meditate properly and you can get that feeling back every day, all day long. And that's what I do. And I, med you know, I'm a huge proponent of it. I have proper instructions on how to meditate in every one of my books to help people learn how to get in touch with their soul. Well, am I and glad to be talking to you, June, because it that's... raises your vibration. That's the yeah. fastest way to raise your vibration is to get in touch with that soul because most can... of it's in the other end. Most of it's not yeah. here. <laughs> and literally as you, I don't, the right word isn't perfect, but get better and better at meditation. Like you said, it's that's cumulative. how you can get that. You the can get that experience because you can get to the point of feeling in that bliss, right? Absolutely. The effects are cumulative. Yeah. And I recommend that everyone meditate for 20 minutes a day, three times a day, because especially when you're starting out, it's going to take you 18 or 19 minutes to actually connect with your soul. Are you tired of paying exorbitant monthly fees for your in-home entertainment? Do you wish there was a way to bring quality and affordable entertainment right into your household without a monthly subscription? Well, look no further. Introducing the VC Box Android TV Stream Box. Since 2020, VC Box has been enriching people's lives all over the world, and now it's coming to North America. Say goodbye to scattered subscriptions and countless apps. We've got all your streaming in one place. This is the best fully loaded Android TV box provider in North America. Our user-friendly interface makes navigation a breeze, and with the voice remote featuring Google Assistant, finding your entertainment has never been easier. The VC Box V2 Pro Android Box is the epitome of convenience. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your favorite shows and movies with just a few simple voice commands. And the best part, no monthly subscriptions. That's right, you heard it correctly. Say goodbye to those pesky recurring fees and hello to endless entertainment. Join the VC Box revolution and elevate your entertainment experience. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. Visit our website and order your VC Box now. Bring home the VC Box today and bring endless joy and excitement to your household. VC Box, unleash the power of entertainment. It's going to yeah. take you that long until you get proficient at it. Well, I'm your next project. Yeah. I got to look it into is, your stuff because this, it that's is cumulative. Because right. even though you, so what happened now? You would think that my my abilities would have opened up again immediately, but they did not because there is a plan. We planned this life before we came here. Yep. And I still had a lot more things that they were going to put me through before that was going to happen because it's the old adage. You have to walk a mile in someone's shoes, right? Yep. If I hadn't gone through all the things that I had gone through, two divorces, miscarriages, losing children, being kidnapped, all this stuff, I wouldn't be able to actually relate to other people that have been through those things, right? Yep. So I was going through my second divorce about 10 years ago and having difficulty in my businesses because I've been in business my whole life and I was running five businesses at the time. 
and I was making decisions out of desperation from my head. And I knew they weren't yes. going to work out because I needed <laughs> bodies. I needed employees. And of course, they weren't working out. Yep. So I went to a Reiki practitioner to have some relaxation. And she recommended that I meditate. And I'm like, there's no way I can meditate. I that my head doesn't want to shut off. But that's sure where, enough, that's the, the story time, that I listen yeah. to. And fight. Yep. The first time that I meditated, it was like they kicked the door in from the other side. And my abilities opened up a thousand times stronger wow. than when I was a child. Wow. And I was working in my businesses at the time. And one of them was a very high end day spa and a medical esthetician. So the first woman that came in, you know, I'm doing a facial on and I'm like, this is really weird. I'm like, did your aunt pass away recently? And she's like, yeah, how'd you know that? I'm like, I have no idea how I know that. I said, did you clean her house out recently? She goes, yeah, last weekend. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, did you happen to find one of those sock pumpies, sock puppets from the 50s? It looks like a monkey. She goes, oh, yeah, we're in the attic. And I'm like going, oh, my God, you got to be kidding me, right? Crazy. Well, this just continued. The next one that came in, I'm like, listen, I don't know what's going on with me, but something's really weird. I said, and I'm suddenly getting all this information. Um, so I'm like, you know, if you don't mind, I said, you have five Christmas trees up in your house? Because it happened to be around the holidays. And she's like, yeah, I do. I said, like a big house. <laughs> I said, you have two of them that are white. They're all white with just white light. I'm like, they're absolutely good. She goes, you've wow. been in my house? I'm like, no, I swear to God, I have not been in your house. I said, I have no idea how this is Freak happening. Out. <laughs> I'm like, you've got a five-year-old daughter, right? She goes, yeah. I said, you got to the Barbie house for Christmas? You've been in my house. I said, I swear to God, I haven't been in your house. I said, I know what you got your husband for Christmas, too. <laughs> I told her, she's like, oh, but she is freaking she's out. like, you have been in my house. I might swear to God, I've not been in your house. I swear to God. Then wow. the next one that comes in, I'm like, listen, I don't know what's going on here, but it's really freaky. I said, so just kind of roll with it if you can, okay? I'm like, do you live in a blue, I'm like, do you live in a, like a little blue cape on the water? She's like, no, I live in a big red ranch. I'm like, oh, good. Maybe it stopped, right? So we start talking. I said, you're really worried about your husband for some reason, huh? She goes, yeah, it's the first time he's traveled without me. I said, oh, he's fine. He'll be fine. But I'm, I'm trying to keep the conversation light. Yeah. So she leaves. She comes, comes running back in the room. She goes, oh, my God, look at this. Look at this. She holds up her cell phone. There's a message from her husband. Look, I found our new house. It's the blue little house on oh, the water. Really? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And then it continued. The next one came in through the door and she had a guy follow her in full uniform. So I'm like, oh my goodness. I said, are you by any chance a widow? She goes, yeah, my husband passed away recently. I said, was he in the military? She goes, yeah, he was. I said, oh, okay. I said, if he had a message or anything for you, would you want to know Point. about it? And I wasn't even trained at this point, but I know not to give anybody information if they don't want That's it. That's right. They have to and ask. She's right. like, no, I really would not want to know. I'm like, okay. Meanwhile, this guy's standing next to me through the whole service. And I'm in my head saying, I'm so sorry. She does not want to know you're here. She can't. Say, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. You know? And he's like, oh my God, I miss her. I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. So I was freaking out. I was looking for anybody that could help me turn this off because right. I didn't know how to. I'm waking up the next morning. I got 40 people around my bed again. I'm like, Holy no. And, and thank God, you know, I did. You know, it's the old adage, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm -hmm. And I found people to help me learn how to control my abilities, how to turn them on, how to turn, because you're always in control. I am always yeah. in control. And you know, my, my my education then just took over from the other side. And I just spent a lot of time in meditation getting information from the other side. Yeah. That's so fascinating. They're always teaching me. Every time I do anything, whether it's a reading, it doesn't matter. They're teaching me constantly. That's that's awesome. So let's let's talk a little bit about, you know, because there's I know there'll be some people in this audience that, you know, are in religion and you know, possibly some never even been exposed to the whole past lives situation. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that and just kind of your understanding of things and, you know, well, what I think the purpose just and about, how. And I think just about every religion talks about past life in some form or another. There's, I mean, there's, 
there's thousands of religions. I want to say there's like 17, 1700 yeah. religions in the U S yeah. that are recognized. There's thousands of them around the world. And of course, everyone thinks they're right and everyone else is wrong. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, your belief system is based on what was drilled into your head <laughs> or what has happened to you. Right. Yep. And growing up, um, I grew up in an extremely dysfunctional family. My mother was raised Protestant, as was my father, but my mother was searching because she was a medium. So mm -hmm. she took us to all different churches, Baptist, Episcopalian, um, Protestant. I was the only Catholic. I was the only Protestant at a Catholic school for second grade. Um, and my sister was Hindu. So... Oh. I was exposed to a lot of wow. different ways of thinking, and I have a lot of friends that are Jewish. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, I grew up thinking that it was all a bunch of hooey, to be honest with you. And these mm -hmm. people riding around with little statues of Mary or they're in the, in the bathtub in their front yard or rosaries. <laughs> I'm like, right. So what I have learned is that they are all right. They are all wrong. Um there's a lot of truth in every religion and there is a lot of non-truth in every religion. Pretty much every religion has been twisted and turned to the benefit of the person that was translating. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. And things, they, and they tell you what they want you to, to be told and people interpret things their own way. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yep. Um, remember that every religion is a business. 100%. Okay? hundred percent. Yep. I mean, I've been asked to leave. I was asked to leave my church. Okay. Because they didn't like something that a rumor that went around. I was asked to leave. Gee. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely. Um, and I've been told at my son's Catholic church, don't get up and take communion, mom. Oh, that's right. It's supposed to be inclusionary, right? Yeah. Oh, right. but exclude everyone else, right? If right. you weren't baptized or drowned or whatever it is. I mean, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. You no, know, they do, but they all serve a purpose. Okay. They serve a purpose. Yeah. And if their purpose is to gather people together, Okay, number one, that's a good thing because we're all here to help each other. That's yeah. number one. If they all talk about a higher, a higher good, whether you want to call it, excuse me, whether you want to call it God, source yeah. energy, energy, uh, Judah, um, Krishna, yeah, whatever, whatever you want yeah. to call it, Buddha, whatever you want to call it, when you get to the other side, you're going to realize there's only one. There's only one. Um, heaven is very different. I've seen what heaven looks at like from a distance and I've been, I've only gone to the fifth dimension, which is the lowest level of heaven. And that's also uh -huh. where the Akashic record room is kept. So every religion pretty much talks about, um, a book of life. Every time you're born, your name goes in the book of life. And that is what the Akashic records are. They are each individual's life. book of lives. Yeah. And all of your lives are in that book. And I got there by accident the first time I was training and I was in a deep meditation. And when you come out, you explain what happened. And I'm like, I don't know. I was in this place that was absolutely amazing. And it, it was all white and filled with light. And, you know, I asked where I was and they said I was in the hall of knowledge. And I'm like, well, I'm all about learning. So tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> so they took me over to what was like a, a tunnel that went around and down into the ground full of books. And they brought me a book and let me go into a side room. And when I opened it again, it was the 3D movie, like my life review. And it was my my life, my some wow. of my lives. And I'm just looking at it amazed. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. So I learned that that was the Akashic Record Room. And if you get there by accident, it means you're meant to be a reader. You're meant to go there. So oh, now wow. I can go there instantly. And you can only read someone's records if you have their permission. And you're not allowed to read anyone's records under like the age of 18 because it could change their life. Change every yeah. Um, so what people don't realize is there's rules on the other side just the same as there are rules here because you have to have order kept. Yeah. And people have jobs and things to do on the other side. God delegates. And the reason for that is because everyone has to have purpose. 
and it gives your soul, it fulfills your soul when you have purpose, no matter whether oh, you're true. here or whether you're on the other side, it's very fulfilling. So we have, per I mean, not, not that you can't do whatever you want on the other side. You want to go vicariously shop at, at, at you know, Lord and Taylor's with someone, or you want to go vicariously fish with someone. That's what you do. They live through us vicariously on the other side, really enjoy life and go do things and see things that they didn't have the opportunity when they were alive. But they all, they still have, you know, things that they need to do, whether it's, you know, educating themselves or helping other people learn things. You learn much faster on this side than you do on the other side. And you learn faster here within relationship as well, because we're here to help each other. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and that's what my that's book is me. based on. My latest book is All's Fair in Love and Karma. And it talks about the five lessons that your soul is are here to learn. You know, we come here for a bunch of different reasons. Uh -huh. I found that we reincarnate. So time only really exists here. It doesn't really yeah. exist in the rest of the universe. Yeah. So I found that our time is about three and a half years to four years of one year in heaven. And they wait about three, 350 to 400 of our years before they come back again. They wait till everybody that they knew and, you know, prodigy are gone before they come my, back again. That'll be my next question. Yeah. yeah. How did she I mean, and there's exceptions to every rule. I was trying to bring uh, through a girl that was a murder victim and she passed when she was 10 and I couldn't bring her through. And I've been able to bring everyone through. Her family members came through to let me know that she reincarnated almost immediately. And she was in this in a body again on earth. Interesting. Wow. That's why I couldn't bring her through. So there's exceptions to every rule. There's nothing hard set. And I don't have the answers to everything. But they've given me a lot of answers to lots yeah. of things. So based um, on your information, you know, do we incarnate and come back to learn different things to help us so, continually so we, learn and grow? We, we Our soul, this is the five lessons that our soul is here to learn. Um, but we come here for a mini vacation, first of all, because on the other side, you don't have a body. You can't smell. You can't taste. You can't have sex, right? So we come here to enjoy being down here in this avatar body. And we forget that as we grow, you know, little children know they trust, right? And they have fun yeah. and they know all their needs are going to be taken care of. Well, That's if you true. trust the universe, they will make sure that all of your needs are always taken care of. Okay. That's so true. So the lessons that we come, and we come down here to collect karma from people that, you know, owed us from previous lives that didn't make amends and to make amends to anyone else that the we wronged karma, and right? didn't. Yeah right? To do that. Yeah. So try not to create anymore. <laughs> but um, the lessons that we're here to learn, the first one is self-worth. And self-worth is not value. Value is what other people place on you. Self-worth yeah. is the knowing, the knowing that you are so important that you are the only one of you on the entire face of the earth. Imagine that, that they thought they yeah. needed you here. OK, and it is not selfish and it's not narcissistic to put yourself first. It's where everything else yeah. comes from. If you can't put you yourself first and take care of yourself, you're yeah. not going to be here to take care of anybody else, are you? Amen. No. OK, so you have to learn how to put yourself first. And that includes your happiness. No one else can make you happy. Happiness is an inside job. And when you're happy, you'll ping pong off everybody else. And it's something else that raises your vibration. OK, yeah. Then you have uh, trust and communication. And it's trusting that you are here for a reason, trusting that you made this plan. So whatever is happening in your life, it's not happening to you. It's happening for, for you. you, for your highest and your best. OK, just because you can't see it because you're in the thick of it. Wait a little bit. You'll see. Yeah. <laughs> and it's trusting that, you know, there is a there is a higher power. There is a God up there and trusting the people that are around you and communicating your wants and your needs. So if you can't communicate your wants and your needs, you know, no one's going to know. They don't know by osmosis, right? Right. And you have <laughs> to trust somebody enough to be able to communicate those needs to them. And sex is just another form of communication. If you cannot communicate outside the bedroom, you're not going to be able to communicate and trust in the bedroom, are you? No. Nope. Right? Then you have unconditional love. And unconditional love does not mean you play the modern, you stay in a bad relationship because, oh, uh, I have to love them unconditionally. No, that's not right. what that means. This is where it reinforces the other lessons and the self-worth kicks in, right? Yep. Unconditional love is saying, we had a good run. I'm grateful for you. I love you and want the best for you, but it's not working anymore and it's not bringing me joy. 
So you go your way, I go mine. That's what it is. I mean, it's not, beating them, it's not yeah. beating them down and taking them down and forgetting right. that, you know, you, we, he was there to learn a lesson. Okay. Uh, same thing if you had a child. Suppose you had a child that you love and they do something horrific, like murdering a neighbor in rage. They mm -hmm. may go to, to jail for the rest of their life and you don't like what they did, but you're still going to love your child, right? Yep. That's Absolutely. unconditional love. Yep. Then you have money and balance. And just like evil plays out in politics, Oh boy. Balance plays out with money in this lifetime. Money is energy. That's why it's called currency. And there has to be an even exchange of everything. Yep. Okay. Um, it has to be something of value. You know, if you're giving somebody something for free, it has no value to them. They're not going to appreciate yeah. it it's that simple you know i have a my seven week mastery program i gave it to a couple of um of military vets that were having if difficulties when i first started out do you know neither one of them did the program because it had no value to exactly them. they have nothing invested yeah, yet i was i was heartbroken because there were two people that could have really benefited from it yeah. and they didn't do it that is a big lesson yeah, yeah for yeah. sure and yeah. it has to do with everything in the universe staying in balance you have to give to get Okay, yeah. that's how it works. Um, and before we used money, there was a barter system, which some people still use. And that's fine. It can be a kind like exchange as long as it's of equal value. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the last one, which is very difficult for people is patience. You know, yeah. we, we live in a world right now where everyone wants instant gratification and it doesn't work that way. How foolish would it be if it did? Yeah. You know, every six-year-old little girl wants to get married like Cinderella and have children, right? Well, good luck with that on your doorstep at six, yeah. right? No, um, it happens when it's supposed to happen, when you planned it in this lifetime. And that means if you're waiting to get married and have children and your little time clock is a ticking, maybe you didn't plan it until later in your life. Maybe it's going to show up when you're 40 and you're going to end up marrying a widow and raising their children. Who knows? You don't know what you've planned and you're not supposed to know for the most part. And the reason is this, if you knew everything that was going to happen in your life, you aren't going to get out of bed the next day. Are you? Yeah. Why bother? Right. You already know, right? Yeah. Even me, you know, they're not going to give me information that I'm not supposed to know. I have a really good feeling of lots of things that are happening, uh -huh. but I don't know everything because they, I'm not supposed to know. Just like people's big joke. Oh, you're a medium. Oh, okay. What's the lottery numbers? How come you haven't won <laughs> yeah. yet? Because right. I'm not supposed to. You know, yeah. if I'm supposed to win the lottery numbers, I'll have them. And quite honestly, it's really funny because about eight or nine years ago, somebody asked me for lottery numbers and I gave it to them and they won. Oh, wow. <laughs> because they were supposed to. I'm not. Yeah. You know, and if they weren't supposed to, then they wouldn't have won on those numbers. I you agree. cannot 100%. change. They're not going to give you information that's going to change your life in a direction that it's not supposed to go. It's that simple. Yeah. It's that simple. That's, that's very interesting. Wow. Man, there's just, <laughs> well, let's, let's uh, talk about that then. I mean, obviously, you mentioned there's ways you feel and I'm, you know, again, I don't expect you to know everything and I know you don't and you will, will tell that. Um, but with, you know, there are a lot of people struggling big time, um, frustrated. And, and I'm not asking this from a political standpoint either, because I believe what is going on is just like you. It's a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, unfortunately, like you said, looked at by so many as a political situation. It has nothing to do with Trump, Biden, any of that, in my opinion, it's good versus evil, just like you said. So, I mean, what is your just opinion on where things are headed? And you so, know, like I said, there? I think we're in the middle of a, a great awakening right now. Yep. And my hope is that people will start to go inside a little bit and start looking at things from a higher perspective. And Get in touch with your soul. Learn how to meditate. It's not going to hurt you to learn something new. Right. Okay. And you may be shocked and surprised. So the law of attraction is real. Energy is it's real. Me. You know, higher authority, source energy, God, it's real. Angels are real. You know, angels are a completely separate race. They were never human. Their entire existence is to help us. But if you don't know that, they are not can't they can't help you. And you have to ask. That's yeah, their rule. Ask. 
You know, I can't tell you how many times my faith has been shaken because maybe things aren't going the way I would like them to go or they're taking longer than they should. And they're famous for this. Um, they take my diamond earrings <laughs> and they're in my ears. I never take them out. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh so, you know, I'm golfing one day and the wind took my hat and I thought, you know, I didn't realize my earring was missing till I got back into the clubhouse. I'm like, oh, my God, my earring's missing. And I'm thinking it must have come out when I was on, you know, the third <laughs> hole yeah. and it's probably out there somewhere. Right. So, you know, what am I, what am I going to do? Right. I don't even yeah. remember where I was on the third hole. So I went back. I meditated. I prayed to St. Anthony. I said, listen. I said, I understand these, these are, I would never be able to afford to replace these earrings. My ex-husband bought them for me. They're beautiful. They're ring yeah. quality. They're very expensive. I said, I get it. If there's somebody out there that is getting married and can't afford an engagement ring and they're going to find this and that's the reason that they're getting it. I, I completely get that. I said, it's not going to change my life. It's not going to make any difference in the world if I don't get it back. But it does bring me a lot of joy. And then yeah. the memory of them is, is really special to me. I said, so if there's any way you can bring them back, I'd really appreciate it. Now, mind you, I was staying in an Airbnb at the time. I stripped the place. I went through the bed thinking maybe I fell there wow. somewhere, nowhere. Didn't find it anywhere. Got up the next morning, went to the bathroom. I'm sitting on the toilet. <laughs> I look down and there it is. Unreal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. and this has happened multiple times just as crazy so wow. he always comes through when i ask but it's it's they're doing it on purpose just to show me june we're still here that's cool we're still here we hear you don't worry and it's just reinforcing my faith and they do it every time that i'm wow. faltering just a little bit <laughs> they come through I, time after time i'm telling you it's crazy the stuff the stories that i could tell you but they make uh, a point of it and they usually do it with saint anthony <laughs> wow but they are here and you know it's just like you know you can't see the forest for the trees for the most part and that's most people okay yeah. i can remember sitting in my car one day because the angels will talk to you through binary code and numbers and symbols so if you're not looking up the symbols and you don't have a clue and you're not looking at the numbers or the code they're giving you, you don't have a clue. And I'm sitting in my car one day and I'm feeling bad for myself. And I'm like, really, guys, I haven't heard anything from you guys in ages. I have I've spent like a week. I've got no contact from you, nothing. And I'm in traffic and I did not move an inch. And I looked to my left and I noticed the telephone pole number was 5656, which is 1111, which is the angel yep. number. And then I noticed on um, the time, the time was 222, twin flame that's number. So, that's and then so I looked to my left yeah. to the mailbox. And the mailbox was 330. I'm like, oh, my God, it's me. So, I'm not paying attention. So it's there me. is something. I, I have heard this, and, and I'm trying to pay attention now as I'm starting to learn a little bit of these things because I am seeing the same numbers consistently yep. you know so whether it's waking up in the middle of yeah whether it's waking up in the middle of the night and seeing my clock up there you know and it's whatever it is 333 or 222 i mean yep. that's happening so my, my first book my first book a night on the other side teaches meditation and everything that i used to teach in uh, my classes but it also teaches you um how the angels what the angels meanings are and things like that um and um, I can't, Doreen Virtue, um, she used to be the foremost authority on the uh, numbers from the angels. Uh -huh. And her book is out of print. If you can find it, it's about $100. She put out, so what happened as part of her journey is she stopped conversing with the angels. She married a strict Catholic who told her what she's doing is evil. And she put another book out to counteract her first book. Oh, wow. Yes. But her first book, uh, her numbers book, Doreen Virtue, um, those numbers are very accurate as far as the sequence of numbers and different binary codes that the angels are using to try to get messages to you. You've got binary codes, but then, so is when you say numbers, is any part of that gematria? What is gematria? Well, where they list the numbers, like A is one, B is two. Um, no, 
no, that, that, no, okay. no, 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 it's just strictly numeric code. Gotcha. Um, okay. But they'll also send you messages. So anything that's out of the ordinary is a message from the other side. And it could be from the angels. It could be from your guides. It could be from a loved one on the other side. Um, you know, I had a, a whole herd of, of a flock of turkeys go in front of my car one day. And I had a whole herd of deer. Not my dead stop. I had a whole herd of deer cross in front of my car, like five feet in front of my car. Those are messages. So you really you need to go to the internet and look up the spiritual meaning of that. Oh, wow. And when you look at it, it's just incredible. There'll usually be two or three meanings. The meaning that resonates with you is the meaning that is for you. For you, gotcha. Okay. Just like this talk that we're having right now. There's thousands of people listening going to be listening to this talk yeah you may not resonate with anything that i'm saying what you resonate with of what i say is what's meant for you to hear yeah that's how it works there's always something there nothing is random you know i used to do daily readings um on youtube when i first started out and i would tell everybody the same thing i would have i do them all live on facebook back then and i've had uh -huh. maybe 100 people chiming in and you know somebody said well how could that be for everybody it's not for everybody everything that i have to say there's going to be one thing at least in there that you're going to pick up that's going to resonate for you and that's why you're listening because yeah. that's what you need to hear that's how it works they always make sure that the message is coming through somewhere, but you have to pay attention to get it because they, they you know, it's like breadcrumbs. Everybody yeah. they say hindsight's 2020, 20, right? Everybody can look behind and see how everything in your life has brought you to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, right? Yep. Well, it's the same thing going forward. They're trying to put you on the path that you're supposed to be on. Uh, okay. So if you can pay attention and stay on the path you're supposed to be on, your life will be absolutely amazing. Or you could do it the hard way and yeah. struggle <laughs> and, you know, get there a lot slower than you're supposed to, or maybe in the next lifetime. Your which choice. Is, <laughs> yeah, which is kind of what I believe this, you know, was, this rat race is being created to keep us in that. And, and as you talk about the reawakening, you know, a lot of people look at that as, you know, different things i personally and i believe there are multiple meanings to that but to me the main meaning is reawakening to who we are that and getting one. in touch with your soul because that's, that's what i mean are. yes yeah, yeah. right and, you know the whole yeah. war of good and exactly. evil is about your soul that's what the devil wants is your soul yeah the same as god wants well, what your the war soul. is the, the yeah, whole war is over your soul that's I, it 100 yeah that's yep. what it is that's what i say reawakening to who we are yeah. And understanding that's who we are. We are. I'm not Steve. I'm not what I see in the mirror. Exactly. Um, you know, that. it's interesting because when I've done like the, the three family that I chase the demon around, you know, when I went into that house, these souls were in this house before the demon got there. There was the basement was full of a, of Irish immigrants from that came over during the potato famine. And they, I'm not sure why they crowded into that house, but they found it as a safe place and energy is collective. So yeah. it's just like anything else, right? They think people crowd together, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's what they were doing. And they were, the, the demon was feeding off their energy and they were afraid to go into the light. So I went down, you know, I'm in the basement and I'm telling them all to pay no attention to him, that all their family is in the light. They can see the light. And I moved them all into the light. There was over a hundred of them. Wow. But this is what is happening. And, you know, the more souls they collect, the more power for them, right? Because yep. they're feeding off of it. And it was the same thing in, in the attic. It was Italian immigrants that had gathered in the attic of this property, um, and, you know, I had de I did a VFW years ago that was very haunted and they wanted to know what I saw in the attic. And I'm like, this was the Underground Railroad. It's full of uh -huh. black slaves, young children and injured people. And I had just started out, so I didn't know about moving them into the light at that time. But they went back there because it was a safe place for them when they were alive. Wow. That's what they did, because that's what we know unless we go into the light. Wow. That's so interesting. So are you actively, um, or do you get, are you still engaged with, you know, what's the word I'm looking for, um, where you help solve crimes, things like that? I am. I did a missing person case a few weeks ago. Um, I, you know, for the most part, I help with anything that I can help if someone contacts me. Uh, yeah. Because that's, they were sent awesome. to me and that's how I see it. Everyone that yeah. 
finds me was sent to me for a reason. Um, that's yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Everything you've talked about definitely resonates with me. There's just to me, this is just so yeah. fascinating. I, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm human like everybody else. I'm not a superwoman Absolutely. or anything else. So you know, right. I maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I have no idea. Sometimes all yeah. I can do is give the information that I get. Yeah. Um, and hopefully I'll find out. You know, unfortunately, one of them wasn't alive at this point, and um, I had to locate the body, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure down the road I'll 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 hear what the situation is, but right. I can only I can only do what I can what do. What you're supposed to do, yeah. Exactly. That's, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, this has been uh, this has been fun. I can't believe an hour has passed. Seems like it's been like 10 minutes. <laughs> it goes quickly. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? But yeah, there's um, I mean, I definitely interested in talking to you and digging into some of your books. Um and I'd love to have you come back. That'd be all right. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. I'd awesome. love to. Yep. And Great. you can get all my books on my website, June Edward. <laughs> excuse me, June Edward. June. Com. Yep. Um, the All's Fair and Love and uh, Karma is uh -huh. also available at all the bookstores. It hit number one bestseller. Um, it's awesome. available in audio as well. And people can schedule appointments with me online. I still do appointments. Um, even if you're not in the U.S., I do work by Skype and Zoom uh, in the U.K. and Australia. Um, oh, great. Yep. So I do okay. that a lot as well. And then I'll, I'll have your information, your website, you know, some of your social profiles in the show notes. So folks, if you're unable to write down that information right now, don't worry about it. We'll have it in the show notes. Is there any, any uh, final words you'd like to leave? Before we wrap this up, June, love your life. You're here for a blink of an eye. You know, it doesn't Jeez. it doesn't cost you anything to be kind to anybody. Be kind. Um, if you don't have anything nice to say, say nothing. Yeah. You, you know, say nothing. Just, yeah. you know, zip it and say, you know what? That's that. Yeah, that is, that is one to live by for sure. So that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to doing this again. And pretty Fantastic. soon. So thank All you right. so thank much. You. And have a Merry Christmas. You as well. Thank you. You got it. Take care. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm here to tell you about my new product from my pillow. Towels that actually work. Watch this absorbency test. Here's another towel that we randomly went out and bought. Here's one of my towels with the nice design. I don't know if you can see this, but you could line a swimming pool with this. This is crazy. Get rid of it. Towels that actually work. The new MyPillow towels are exclusively made with 100% USA combed cotton with proprietary technology and with maximum absorbency. They dry you faster and are guaranteed to work. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled MyPillow. And to thank you for all your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to MyPillow.com to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. For example, you get my dog beds for as low as $19.99 or for a limited time you can get my six piece towel sets regularly $109.99 now only $39.99 the lowest price ever with your promo code